Hey guys, welcome to a whole lot of gray and I'm your host Anish Anandra. Today, we're going to be talking about chess. In this pandemic, chess seems to have emerged as everybody's favorite quarantine activity. Chess.com, the world's largest online portal for chess, has estimated that since the start of the coronavirus pandemic back in April, nearly 50,000 new members have joined their site each and every single day. Further, Netflix's super successful TV show, The Queen's Gambit, has been viewed in 62 million households around the globe in just its first month alone, ultimately making it Netflix's most successful scripted limited series TV show till date. And despite all these cool facts about chess, there is one fact that still stands out to me regarding the sport. It's how at this point in 2020, chess isn't a co-ed sport. You have separate world championship titles and tournaments for men and separate world championship titles and tournaments for women. And throughout the course of this episode, we're going to be arguing as to why that ought to change and why chess ought to become a co-ed sport and how the case for chess being co-ed is not only beneficial for the sport at large but is ultimately very beneficial for women chess players and future generations of women in general so before we jump into it i just want to preface a couple reasons as to why i believe it's odd that you know chess isn't co-ed already uh, the first reason i want to preface with is the fact that look let's look at most other sports right boxing football tennis basketball all of these sports the reason why they are not co-ed for instance is because of you know obvious anatomical and physical differences that separate both men and women uh for instance on average men tend to you know be taller they tend to have larger bone structures and greater muscle masses all of which actually you know impact the outcomes of these given sports right which is why you don't want a man and a woman to compete with each other on a tennis court or a man and a woman to compete with each other on in the boxing ring so that's the reason because these anatomical differences but when it comes to chess these anatomical differences are completely irrelevant nobody cares how tall you are nobody cares you know what your bone structure is like and nobody cares what your muscle mass is chess is a game contested on a chess board with the same 16 pieces and it doesn't care whether you're a man or a woman it's purely a game of skill and how well you can use the pieces on the board so that's the first reason i think it's a little weird right you can't even use the argument that oh, okay anatomical differences exist and therefore we should have this as um, a non coed sport the second reason why i think it's a little odd that it's not already a coed sport is just the irony regarding the nature of the game so if you've ever played chess you'll know that the king is insanely useless nobody quite knows why exactly the king is even there right apart from okay protecting it and making sure the opposition doesn't checkmate your king that's pretty much the purpose of it but if you look at the queen the queen is by far the most powerful piece you have uh, it can move in any direction it can move in any number of steps so yeah i just think it's very ironic that the game where the queen is your most powerful piece and your king is pretty useless this is the game where you don't want women and men to compete with one another that's that's a bit ironic to me and uh, that's the second reason why i think it's a bit odd but let's deep dive into the meat of this issue so i want to start by quoting miss eva repkova who is the head of women's chess at the international chess federation so she believes as recently as october 2020 uh in an interview where she stated that women are naturally disadvantaged uh when it comes to chess compared to their male counterparts and generally she believes this for two main reasons right uh, the first one is that uh women are less likely than you know their male counterparts to make a uh, good money from professional chess and the second reason she states is and keep in mind I'm quoting her so if you have an issue with uh what what she said take it up with uh, Eva Rebkova don't bring it up with me I'm just quoting her but she does say women are naturally less likely to possess skills like an ego a fighting spirit and a desire to beat your opponent all of which are skills that you know are required to excel at chess and she follows that up with saying very candidly actually by saying it may not be what you like to hear but i'm being honest and straight off the bat regarding that second point um i don't think that's entirely true because you know it has to be noted that the in 2003 
when Anatoly Karpov, who is, you know, one of the greatest male chess players of all time, faced Miss Judith Polgar, who the Hungarian grandmaster and one of the greatest female chess players of all time. When the two faced each other, Judith Polgar actually checkmated Anatoly Karpov. So in this exhibition match in 2003. So straight off the bat, less than 20 years ago, you have a pretty solid example of a, you know, elite women, women's chess player checkmating an elite men's chess player. Uh, but we will, we will address uh, Mrs. Repkova's concerns later on throughout the course of this episode as well. So in addition to, you know, this Judith Polgar example, I want to give you three reasons why I think it's advantageous to women um, and just the sport as a whole to combine chess as a co-ed activity. And I think the reasons I'm about to provide you with actually address uh, Mrs. Eva Rebkova's concerns regarding women. So the first point I just want to bring up straight off the bat is I think if you made chess co-ed, it would you know, teach future generations of women that, okay, they can compete with men on the global stage at the most elite level. And I think the best example for this is um, this the global STEM industry, you know, science, technology, engineering, math. I think, you know, it's predominantly, uh, you know, male, male dominated uh, industry around the world. And yet, and women constitute only like 29% of all STEM positions worldwide. And despite this, right, despite this massive disparity, um, it's not like we have, you know, it's not like we have a Nobel Prize in the sciences for women or a Nobel Prize in the sciences for men. And it's not like tech companies have a male CEO and a woman CEO, right? So despite this overwhelming disparity, which obviously needs to, you know, get mitigated as time goes on, but despite this overwhelming uh, disparity in numbers, women still compete with men for the same spots, right? And because it, it, it teaches them that, okay, we can compete with men at the most elite level. And if you don't take my word for it, look at 2020, this calendar year, the Nobel Prize winners for both chemistry and physics, respectively, uh, two American scientists uh, by the name of Andrea Ghez and Jennifer Doudna. Both of them are the current holders of the Nobel Prizes in chemistry and physics, respectively. Both of them are women, despite STEM being uber male dominated. So just like how, you know, I'm sure they're going to serve as amazing role models for future generations of women to learn that, OK, fine, we can compete with men, even in fields where, you know, men may outnumber us. I think just like that, having chess as a co-ed activity would serve the same uh, purpose and actually inspire future women to do the same. Uh, the second thing I want to, the second point I want to talk about is let's assume, right, that Eva Ripkova's comments uh, regarding men being more, you know, uh, naturally possessive of traits such as a fighting spirit and a desire to win. Let's assume that her comments are correct. Let's assume that they're correct. If indeed that she's correct about that, I think that's even more reason why chess shouldn't be uh, gender separate. I think that's a great reason why chess should be co-ed. And I'll tell you why. The National Institute of Health in Washington, D.C., in 2009, they ran a study. And in this study, they found that among young adults and adolescents, women tended to be more empathetic, have a higher emotional quotient, and be more compassionate than their, you know, male counterparts. And the, you know, conclusions of the study are that, okay, through consistent interaction with women, men are likely to develop, you know, empathy, greater levels of empathy, emotional intelligence, and compassion. And I think we all agree, whether you're a guy or a girl, or whatever you identify as these days, anything, honestly, um, if you have, you know, empathy, compassion, and high emotional intelligence, these are favorable human traits regardless of, you know, what, uh, what gender or sex you are. Uh, that's just a fact. I think it, it, we all agree these are favorable human traits. And similarly, the traits that Eva Ripkova describes, uh, you know, to be successful in chess regarding a fighting spirit and a never say never attitude and a desire to win. I think these are all favorable human traits as well. And so just like how the National Institute of Health study said that, hey, listen, women tend to be more empathetic. And if men interact with them, that empathy can rub off on men and men can develop uh, you know, greater levels of empathy and compassion. I think if Mrs. Repkova's comments indeed are correct, then I think that's all the more reason why we should combine it as a co-ed activity because women, through greater interacting with men, 
on the chess board and competing with men at an elite level of professional chess will be more likely to develop those traits uh, regarding, you know, having a fighting spirit and a desire to defeat your opponent, which just like empathy and compassion, I think are awesome human traits in general. And these are all traits regardless of, you know, like I said, man, woman, whatever you are, you should strive to, um, you know, develop in your day-to-day -day life. And obviously all of this holds true if you do, uh, like I said, assumption to the start is you assume Ivar Rupkova's comments uh, are indeed correct. And um, third and final point I want to bring to the forefront is that I think making co-ed chess, I mean rather making chess co-ed will economically drive um, women's chess forward. And which is like another concern that Mr. Rupkova had, which I'm addressing. And I think a big reason, you know, there's this huge ongoing debate about how women athletes are making way less than their male counterparts. And ultimately, this is a consumer slash viewership issue, right? Uh, the logic is that men's sports on average tend to draw way more viewers than women's sports. And as a result, of which male athletes are making more than female athletes, right? I don't want to go to, into that argument specifically too much, but I have a couple of interesting stats that you might uh, think are, you know, valuable in this discussion. So if you look at tennis, for instance, right? In the year 2016, Worldwide, all women's tennis events drew more uh, roughly 375 million viewers, okay, in the calendar year of 2016 for all WTA events, which is all uh, women's tennis association association events. And similarly, that same calendar year, all male tennis events drew 900 million plus viewers. So you see almost a, you know, 3x disparity between the male viewership and the female viewership. So, okay, fine, the economic case to pay male athletes more in tennis exists, right? Same for football or soccer to our American listeners. Same, it's the same logic. In this calendar year, excuse me, in this calendar year, the Champions League finals were contested, you know, both um, in the women's division of football as well as the men's division. And uh, women's, uh, the women's Champions League final, and keep in mind the Champions League final, for those of you who aren't familiar with the sport, is the most elite, you know, match in uh, world football. So, uh, in the Women's Champions League final, which was contested between Lyon and Wolfsburg, around 700,000 viewers tuned in to watch it. And similarly, a couple of weeks later, the Men's Champions League final happened between Bayern Munich and Paris Saint-Germain. They raked in more than 2 million viewers. So again, you see there's a you know significant popularity gap, um, and as a result of which, um, it's really hard to you know economically make the case at least that, okay, fine, like um, the you know pay, pay disparity in this regard probably shouldn't exist but that said where where it contributes to you know say tennis and football and all these other sports the reason why this viewer disparity exists is because of the anatomical differences we spoke about at the start because you know these are highly physical sports um uh, men's sports on average men's tennis for instance they play five sets as opposed to women's tennis where they play only three sets so men's tennis tends to be you know more intense and physical uh because of the anatomical differences which is why they play for a longer time so that contributes to the entertainment factor for a viewer. Similarly for, you know, any sport wherein, like I said, the anatomical differences actually impact the output. And that that does play, uh, that is a variable in the entertainment quotient for the viewer. But for chess, like I've said a couple of times before already, that logic does not apply, right? Because your anatomical differences don't mean anything. It's not like if a woman chess player competes with a men chess player, it's not like, you know, it's any less entertaining if two women are playing each other or a woman's playing a man or, you know what I mean? The entertainment quotient has nothing to do with anatomical differences and as a result of which has nothing to do with gender or sex when it comes to chess. So if you look at the current women's world chess champion, Zhu Wanjun from China, and you look at the current uh, male chess champion from Magnus, uh, the current world chess champion for men, Magnus Carlsen from Norway, if both of them played each other, you can... This is a unique moment in women's sporting history wherein you can actually, where Wu Jun can actually make the case of getting comparable pay to Magnus Carlsen because she can say, hey, listen, I was on the same card as Magnus Carlsen. I played Magnus Carlsen in chess. His viewers are tuning in to watch me as well. So it's not a situation of where we're drawing different viewership because I'm competing with him. Like our viewers are watching both of us. So it's unique from every other sport wherein A, you can't use this anatomical difference argument and B, um, you know, the viewership is pretty much going to be the same if it is co-ed, right? Uh, so I think uh, that's just, a, the, the, this is a massive reason why I think, you know, chess ought to be co-ed. 
Um, especially because, like I said, it will economically drive the sport. And imagine how cool it'll be. You finally have a professional sport that's played around the world wherein men and women are getting comparable pay, uh, especially because, you know, the economics of it uh, more than works out. So in addition to all these three, you know, points of giving you the examples and data as to why I think it ought to be the case, in addition to all of this analysis as to why I believe chess ought to be go ahead, um, let's not forget just another thing that women go through like childbirth and pregnancy and stuff, which requires, you know, an insane amount of endurance and mental strength to cope with um, or so have been told. But I think because of which they'd be perfectly fine playing like chess on a chessboard against some dude. You know what I mean? So um, anyway, uh, with that, we come to the end of this feature presentation. Um, I hope we've made it abundantly clear, you know, that it is better for both, you know, pretty much every stakeholder involved. If um, chess is, you know, a co it turns into a co-ed activity and it's even actually one more thing. It's actually better for like male chess players too. If you truly believe that, oh, you're the world's best chess player, it shouldn't matter whether you're playing a guy or a girl, right? So I think even for them, you can make the case that fine, like they, if they truly are the best, you got to play everyone, you know, regard, not just the best men, play the best women as well. So I think even for them, it's better. But yeah, ultimately, you know, I feel like I've done a good job addressing Mrs. Rupkova's concerns, right, regarding women not being able to make enough money. I've told you how like having them both compete with each other will draw the same viewers. And unlike in the case of tennis and football, and will, you know, address the concept of women not making enough money. And the second is this idea that, oh, women don't possess the same traits. I gave you the example of, you know, how men can develop more favorable traits by interacting with women. I don't see why the vice versa can't take place. And most notably, I've given you the examples of how making chess co ed will inspire future generations of women to come. And most notably, in the case of two women being the current holders of Nobel Prizes in STEM fields, despite STEM being way more male dominated or just as male dominated as chess is. Uh, but anyway, uh, these are my thoughts. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video. I'd love to hear what you guys think and have to say about my comments. Uh, please like, share uh, everything this video. And yeah, let me, know if, uh, let me know if you have any concerns or have any questions or you agreed with what I said. I'd love to hear everything. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, the link is in the description below. If you want to reach out via DM to discuss this or any other future content, I'd love to hear from you. But until then, uh, stay safe. And uh, for what's left of 2020, I hope you enjoy your year. Peace. And I hope you'll join us for the next uh, feature presentation next week. Cheers, guys.